What's up, y'all? PDT here. Thursday night. <clears throat> no more genies happening. Uh, now, I know you have lots of questions. <laughs> and the main one is, why am I in my car? The answer to that question is because I was out and about, and I knew I wasn't going to get back home in time. So I'm like, we got to do it from the car. So it's time for a car video, okay? So let me see if I can get a little bit more light going. Uh, wait. Uh, I don't know if that helps or not, but anyway. Okay, so uh, we're going to dive right in. Uh, so let me say a word of prayer and we'll get started. Thank you, God, for this night. Thank you for this broadcast. Oh, God, please uh, breathe through me. Oh, God, live through me, speak through me. I must decrease so that you might increase, that you might get the glory in all things. Thank you, God, that we serve you because we want to, not because we have to. And thank you for your love and your grace and your kindness. So speak through me, oh, God, so that what you want said might be said right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. What we're going to talk about tonight, see, it occurred to me that there's a lot of things that I want to revisit, that there's some things I want to let me get myself over here in the light. There's some things I want to revisit, some things that I'm going to need to go over again. And uh, I don't even know if that's helping. Is that helping? Some things I want to go over again. But one of the things I need to start with is Bible basics because you hear me talk about it all the time. I'm a stickler for what the word actually says. And that's what No More Genies is about. No More Genies is actually about what the word actually says and getting rid of a genie concept of God, a magic concept of God, a concept of God that doesn't have anything to do with scripture, but it's traditions of men, it's stuff you learned, it's bad information. And go back and watch my first video in No More Genies. I go to it in uh, in great detail, but basically it's talking about, <clears throat> it's talking about uh, how some people have really messed their lives up because of genie concept, and some people have died because of genie concept, and there's my sister, hey sis, and some people have just gone down the wrong path because they have this genie concept of God. They have this concept of God that doesn't have anything to do with what the scripture actually says. So that's why I started my No More Genies broadcast on the second Thursday night of every month, specifically to deal with that very thing. I don't know if this light is helping or not. Maybe it is. Specifically to deal with that very thing so that um, we would have our proper concept of God. So there's some stuff I'm going to revisit and there's some stuff that I didn't get a chance to do uh, everything with it that I wanted to do. But the first thing we're going to go over, especially tonight, especially now in 2020, if there was ever a time that what I'm going to talk about tonight was needed is now. What we're going to talk about tonight is Bible basics. Now, I already have a video posted on this, but I'll do this live video just to go over these principles again. But they definitely need to be reiterate it. Okay, so we're going to go over again basics of Bible study. What you need to understand about Bible study is there's actually a proper way, a correct way to study the Bible and a lot of wrong ways to study the Bible because I know that you know some folks or you've noticed or you've seen somewhere in your life people doing and saying crazy things based on Bible verses. Now, remember last Sunday, I talked about looking crazy. So right off the bat, uh, what's the difference between faith and crazy? <coughs> Do you know? Do you know the difference between faith and crazy? The difference between faith and crazy is results. <laughs> if you have faith in God, if God has told you something, you're standing on a promise in the word, or God has given you a prophetic personal word, and God has made you a promise, then no matter how crazy you look in pursuing it, eventually that promise is going to manifest. Eventually, 
everything is going to show up. If something just crazy or you just crazy, nothing ever shows up. There's no manifestation. Okay. That's the difference between faith and crazy. So, uh, like I said, I know you've seen it. I know you've seen some people going off the deep end because they got a hold of a Bible verse or two. And next thing you know, they've done something crazy or they're teaching crazy things or someone has messed their life up uh, following crazy principles. And have you ever wondered how people got there? Haven't you ever wondered how people got somewhere to where uh, they might be quoting scripture or they might be quoting a version of scripture, whatever, whatever it is they think they're doing. But it's all off. It doesn't produce the fruit of the spirit. It doesn't produce signs and wonders and miracles. Okay? That's what's supposed to show up when the rightly divided word of truth is preached, prophesied, and taught. If you didn't know that. If you want to know how to tell what you're hearing is the rightly divided word of truth. <clears throat> what that means is that if it's the right interpretation of the word of God or if, if it's a right prophetic word, a right prophetic word from God and the right interpretation of the Bible will always produce, one, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and it will always produce signs and wonders and miracles and other okay because the spirit of god will offer to back up the word of god you understand so that's how you know when you've got a rightly divided okay when you've got a wrongly divided word like i said it can produce all kinds of crazy stuff it can produce all kinds of things that are detrimental so you need to study the Bible. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. Principle. I'm going to give you five principles. And here's the first principle. Matter of fact, let me write it down. This principle. I'm going to principles. Bible study. Okay, and I'm going to put that on the screen. So, principle number one <clears throat> always pray before you read. Okay, always pray before you read. Okay. Before you read the scripture, you have to ask the Holy Ghost to help guide you while you're reading the scripture. You can't just open up the Bible and jump up anywhere. You have to, have to ask the Holy Ghost, where do you want me to read today? That's why I wrote that prophetic journal, uh, because it has prophetic scriptures every day that I prayed over and asked the Spirit of God about. You have to ask the Lord you know, to guide you to uh, what he wants you to read, or if you have like a particular Bible study you're doing, you have to pray and ask him to guide you before you go into it so that the spirit of God can be a part of everything you, that you're doing with your Bible study, because the word of God is only understood by revelation. Uh Oh, looks like my Wi-Fi is floating in and out. Uh, the word of God is only understood by revelation. Okay. All right, looks like my Wi-Fi was floating in and out, but I'm back. Okay, so the word of God is only understood by revelation. It's not understood by human intellectualization. It's not something that you understand with your mind. It's something that is revealed to you by the Spirit of God. That's why principle number one is that you always have to pray before you read. Okay? Principle number two, typing this in the chat. You have to go back to the original languages, and that is Hebrew, Aramaic, 
and Greek. Okay? You have to go back to the original languages. Principle number two. And that is, again, in here. All right, so click it back on. Okay, so the Bible was not originally written in English. It was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Those are much more expressive, and those three languages have much more broader depths of meaning behind the words. For example, English, there's a word we have, love. And we use that word for just about every kind of love we experience. I love my dog. I love my car. You know, I love my wife. I love my school. I love my house. That's all the same word in English. But in Greek, there are many different words for love. Eros, which is erotic or romantic or sexual love. There is philios, which is brotherly love. That's where we get Philadelphia from, the love. There is agape, which is the highest form of love, the uh, divine, unconditional love of God. So much more, that's probably the most common example of why you have to go back to the original languages. Now, you do not have to get a degree in the original languages. You can use uh, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, okay? And that is uh, now is available online, okay? Now, I'll show you the website that I use all the time is biblehub.com. Strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you go to biblehub.com because I love the way it's laid out. I love all the different, it gives you all the different translations. It gives you a connection to Strong's Exhaustive Concordance so you can look up the words for yourself, okay? But you're going to have to go back to the original language. You can't just read it in your first language, of, unless, of course, your first language is Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic, but English, it doesn't always do justice to what the scripture is saying, okay? So that's principle number two. Here comes principle number three. Principle number three is, and this is a biggie, although they're all biggies, <laughs> never take a scripture out of context. Never take a scripture out of context, okay? That's why you have to go back to the original languages. Okay, when the Bible is written, the Bible separates us now in terms of when it was written over a period of thousands of years. And if you're here in America, if you're in the West, the Bible was written by Middle Eastern people. So there's a time differential and there's a huge culture difference. Now, if you've ever heard of what is uh, called a Messianic believer, a Messianic believer is what we call a Jew for Jesus or Jewish people that actually believe in Christ as Messiah, okay? If you've ever heard them expound the scripture, man, they understand every reference, everything, because it came out of Hebrew culture. So there's nothing in the Bible that uh, a Jew for Jesus couldn't expound to you. It's, it's just, they are just so on top of it. You just have to talk to a Messianic believer and hear them explain the Bible concepts from a cultural point of view. It's, it's just incredible. So, but that's why you have to understand the context of what's going on in scripture. You have to understand who said what to who, <laughs> who was talking, what did they say, what were they talking about, you know, what was the context, what was the context, that's the thing. It is the easiest thing in the world to go all off the deep end, because remember I started off talking about going off the deep end, it's easy thing in the world to go off the deep end when you're taking scripture out of context, when you have not studied what was going on. Like, for example, in the Old Testament, there are many, many different period, time periods for the history of the Hebrew people. Like when they first got started, it was with Abraham. And then after Joseph died, they were in Egypt and they multiplied, but they went into slavery. And then to get in the promised land, that took Joshua and they stayed in the promised land for several years, but they eventually got captured by the Babylonians and went into captivity because they were disobedient to God. And that's when uh, Daniel was written in captivity and so many of those other books. And then there's many books in the prophets about the Jews coming back out of captivity. And there's Psalms that are written in different time periods. So that's what I mean when I 
start to get the context of what's going on, talking about who they're talking to and what's the general context of what's happening. Okay, that's number three. Number four, another biggie. Well, they're all biggies. Number four, four is stacks up with other scripture. Okay. You see how scripture stacks up with other scripture. Extremely important. Why is that extremely important? Because the Bible does not contradict itself. Now, a whole lot of people, a whole lot of Bible critics talk about how the Bible contradicts itself, and that's not true. What the Bible does is it gives balance. Whenever you have a principle going one way, left to the right to achieve balance, and that's not contradiction. Uh, the Bible always, always validates itself in terms of there's consistent themes. There's consistency in the scripture, but the spirit of God is the one that wove it all together, which is why principle number one is you got to pray before you read. So that's what a lot of people that approach the scripture with unbelief or they approach it without being saved or without knowing the Holy Ghost are going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff about scripture that isn't true. Because you have to see how scripture stacks up with other scripture. So sometimes people interpreting the Bible ignore what other scripture says about the subject. I'll give you one of my favorite subjects. One of my favorite subjects that people tend to argue about is eternal security. And eternal security is uh, once you saved, are you always saved? Or can you ever be unsaved and go to hell and lose your salvation? And the answer to that question is you cannot lose your salvation. Once you are saved, you are always saved. You can't lose your salvation and go to hell. And uh, so there's a lot of scriptures in the New Testament in particular that people have taken out of context. They don't understand what the scriptures actually saying. Uh, and a lot of that is because they don't understand God as a person and they don't understand that we're in a kingdom. We're in a kingdom of heaven. And so a lot of the stuff that the Lord is talking about that people have mistakenly uh, interpreted to mean that you can lose your salvation and, and go to hell is actually the Lord talking about people losing their place. Uh, in the kingdom, not losing their salvation, but the full reward that the Lord would have given you is always based on if you have a daily walk with him and if you're obedient, if you're believing and obedient and you do what he says, if you are just doing what you want to do as a Christian, that will not get you the full reward of God. It doesn't mean you're going to go to hell because Jesus already paid for your sins, but it means in the kingdom of heaven, you will not have the position and the reward that you could have had if you had lived for Christ. But a lot of people have misinterpreted scriptures that are talking about that, what I just said, as being cast out and going to hell. It's just like if you have an estate and you have like five kids and one child, <coughs> excuse me, was always obedient and did what you wanted. And another child was never obedient and never did what you wanted. They both still your children. Okay. But you're going to trust your business to the obedient child and not to what the Bible is talking about in most of those scriptures when people are saying that you're going to lose your salvation and go to hell. No, that's incorrect. Okay. And now we're going to principle number five. <clears throat> and principle number five is always... Oh, Lord, it looks like my Wi-Fi I keep jumping in and out. Okay. Principle number five is always remember the point of Bible study. Okay. Put that on the screen. Principle number five is to always remember the point of Bible study, okay? And the point of Bible study is to get to know the God of the Bible. <laughs> you think something that simple would be obvious, but it's not 
obvious. That's not what people, that's not what everybody uh, studies the Bible for. Okay? For example, in Matthew 4, one of my favorite examples, when the devil came to Jesus in the wilderness tempting him, the devil quoted scripture to the Lord. The devil had the nerve to quote the written word to the living word. And the devil quoted uh, Psalms 91, where it says he'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They bear you up in their hands, let you dash your foot against the stone to try to get Jesus to throw himself off a mountain and say that God will kept him. God will catch him. And the Lord responded by saying, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So in other words, what the Lord was saying is that what the devil was quoting was what the Bible said, but that's not what it meant. The Bible did not mean that just because God promises you angelic protection, that you can do foolish things like throw yourself off of a mountain and then demand that God catch you. So what's the difference between what the devil said and what Jesus said in Matthew 4? Okay, the devil quoted the Bible, but Jesus knew the God of the Bible and Jesus is the God of, of the Bible because Jesus is the living word and the Bible is the written word. So in other words, Jesus knew what God meant by what he said. The devil was quoting what he said, but Jesus knew what he meant by what he said. And that's how people go all off with these scriptures. They learn a few scriptures and then they build all these crazy ideas and these crazy philosophies and this crazy stuff because they didn't miss the whole point. The point of Bible study is not trying to control people. The point of Bible study is not trying to abuse people. The point of Bible study is not trying to display how much scripture you can quote. That's not the point. The point of Bible study is to get to know the God of that's the point. And if you're studying scripture for trying to show how you are, or to try to find a way to control people, or to try to find a way to abuse people, you have missed our point. Because the entire point of the Bible know the God of the Bible. That's why we have the completed canon of his thoughts, we can know his ways, we can know his desires, so we can know his commandments, his statutes, expectations of us. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of God laying out his word in written form to know him. Okay? There's no relationship where we get to know him. Okay? All right. So to review right quick before we wrap up, tonight we're talking about principles of Bible study, how to properly study the Bible so you don't get, go off and, and get the wrong idea getting into wrong stuff. Principle number one, you always pray before you read. You have to ask the Holy Ghost in your Bible study. Number two, you have to go back to the original line, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Number three, you never take a scripture out of context. You have to understand the context of what's being said and who was saying it and when. Scripture stacks up with other scripture, okay, because the Bible will always support itself. And number five, you have to always remember the point of Bible study, which is to get to know God of the Bible and no other reason. Okay? Uh, all right, that's it for tonight. Uh, not a long one tonight, but there's a whole lot of stuff I'm going to revisit in the days to come. And I wanted to be sure I laid that foundation again. You will find all of what I talked about in the comments. And then also I'll put the address for Bible Hub in the comments. So when you study the Bible, now you've got those principles. So I want you to apply those principles when you study the scripture. And I'm going to be referring to them in future videos. So so definitely check them out. Watch this video from the beginning. Uh, thanks to everybody that watched me live. Thanks to everybody that's watching on YouTube, on the podcast. But watch this video from the beginning so you can get all the principles so you know how to properly apply them when you study scripture. Okay? Amen and God bless. Uh, that's it for tonight. No more genie. No more genies. Number twenty nine, which turned out to be a car video because I knew I wasn't gonna get back home uh, in time. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Love you all, and I will see you Sunday, uh, two thirty p.m. Central Standard Time, for my next uh, weekly live prophetic word. All right. Amen and God bless. <laughs>